Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Adigopala. I am a pediatric doctor in Ashtabula County Medical Center. I've been in Ashtabula close to uh, 10 years now. Um, I'm just making this video to talk to um, parents in our neighborhood and parents around uh, who may have concerns about COVID, um, the, the risks of COVID, the risks of vaccination, and the benefits of vaccination. Personal experience with vaccine, me and my wife both have been vaccinated. My 15-year-old uh, niece and my 12-year-old nephew have been vaccinated and I'm still waiting for data to come in to show about the safety profile for younger kids. So I probably can vaccinate my six-year-old and my three-year-old as well. The most important questions I usually get about vaccinations are um, side effects of the vaccinations and how the vaccination works. Um, I mean, for now, most of us would have seen at least somewhere about how the COVID virus looks. It's, it's a virus which has got multiple spikes on the, uh, on, on, the, on the cell. So we are focusing, the vaccinations are focusing on one of the spikes. When you get the vaccination, the body creates the protein which resembles that spike. So when, when you are exposed to the virus, as soon as the body sees the virus, it will identify that spike and say, hey, you know what, I already know this, I already know how to fight this and will start fighting the virus faster. The side effects with the vaccination are uh, very short standing. They last for about 24 hours to 48 hours, much lesser than the full blown infection, which can last for two to three weeks and sometimes can have effects for six months to eight months too. We have had patients who have had COVID last year and are still having symptoms associated with that. And especially with younger kids having COVID, they have what is called the uh, multiple multi-system uh, inflammatory disorder, which can cause problems, including inflammation around the heart and um, dilation of the blood vessels around the heart, putting them at risk of heart problems for the rest of their lives. So the vaccine does seem to uh, decrease the risk of this one too. Um, if you're looking at the vaccine safety for the younger kids for 12 to 16, the one additional thing that we are seeing is a minimal inflammation around the heart which is also short standing. It lasts for 24 to 48 hours. Most of them are having full recovery. They're not needing any, any medications and they seem to go back to being the normal self in a couple of days. Um, the other questions that uh, I, I get most often is uh, the vaccine was developed in a very short period of time. Yes, this vaccine was developed in a very short period of time, but having it said that, technology has improved a lot. Um, in the 1950s, when we first developed the polio vaccine, it took us about 60 years to produce a polio vaccine. But the other vaccines in the last couple of decades took about five to 10 years. <clears throat> but this pandemic has been a global pandemic, and this is the first pandemic that we have had in, in, in the era of technology advancement. So multiple scientists across the uh, globe have been uh, coordinating all their research together so it's not like one person was trying to find the vaccine. It was multiple hundreds and thousands of labs across the globe were trying to find the vaccine. They were sharing data. It was, it, was a, it was a wonderful endeavor. We have newer technologies which can identify the genome of the virus very fast. We identified the genome of the virus within two weeks of the pandemic um, coming through. So all of these things made it much more easier to develop a vaccine much more faster. We have given almost uh, 177 million um, people in the United States have had the vaccine and we're not seeing any long-term side effects. Um, the other questions that I get is about um, the rumor of infertility caused by the vaccine, which has not been proved and which has been disproved in multiple studies showing that Nobody who has had the vaccine, both male and female, are at risk of um, infertility. People who have had the vaccine have given birth to normal babies, and we are even advising moms to uh, get the vaccine in the third trimester so they can start protecting the fetus in the belly even before the baby comes out. The reason we are more focused on the vaccine now is that we have a new variant called the Delta variant, which is spreading much more faster and much more uh, severe symptoms than the original uh, virus. The original virus um, was easy to spread. If one person had it, they would have 
spread it to two or two and a half people. Now the new virus is spreading it to three and a half to four, so it's almost double the spread rate as before. The Delta variant of the virus seems to be spreading much more faster because it colonizes in the nose. So even for people who have had the vaccination, the virus, when it goes into the nose, it starts developing in the nose. So they can keep spreading it for a couple of days to other people before the body realizes that the virus is in the body and attacks the virus and gets rid of the virus. So people who have had the vaccine, um, the body still identifies the virus even though it is Delta variant, but it takes a couple of extra days. So these people can still uh, spread the virus to other people. So they may get the illness. So about 97% of people who are right now admitted in the United States in hospitals with uh, COVID um, are are people who have not yet made the decision with the vaccination, who have not had had the vaccination. Almost 99% of people who have died with the COVID um, illness in the last three to four weeks have not been vaccinated. So it clearly shows that vaccinated people are less sicker and have had much lesser chance of death um, with the new variant as well. The breakthrough infections with the vaccination is primarily because uh, the, the virus stays in the nose for a few days before it glows into the bloodstream and kicks our immune uh, process into, uh, into gear so the body can take out of the virus faster. With um, children going back to schools, especially children less than 12 who have not had the opportunity to have the vaccination going back to schools by the end of this month, it makes it much more um, much more uh, urgent that we, we protect our younger kids. The best way to protect younger kids who have not been vaccinated is to get other people around them vaccinated so we can create a bubble of safety around them. So if parents, grandparents, uh, older siblings are all vaccinated, it mu makes it much more safer for the younger kids too. And what we have realized going through the pandemic last year and going through multiple variations of school last year, once our kids went back to school with appropriate social distancing, masking, putting shields on, we realized that the infection rate in schools were much lesser. The infection rates were slightly higher with sports. So the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics um, has come forward with guidelines for schools this year and they are um, advising to follow the same guidelines as last year um, to continue with masking, continue with shielding, and maintain uh, appropriate social distancing. Lastly, I want to make a few comments about children less than 12. We have uh, three major studies going around with uh, Pfizer and two, or I think three studies with Moderna as well. They're looking at safety profile for um, five years to 12 years, and the two years to five years and six months to two years. The studies are all going on right now. We still don't have the data yet. There are two major questions that we need to answer. One, what is the dose that we need to give for kids? If you give a higher dose, they may have a higher um, side effects. If you give them too little of a dose, so it may not cause the optimal uh, immunity. So that is the um, Goldilocks question. Which one is too much, which one is too less? So we need to find that sweet spot. And the second question is, um, does, the, does the vaccine cause a lot of inflammation in younger kids? We know that for 12 to 16 year olds, it did cause slightly more um, immune products in their body than older people. And it did cause slightly more inflammation, even though the inflammation was shot limited just for a day or two. We are worried that the younger kids may have more inflammation, so we're waiting for that data. And obviously talk to your doctor, talk to a medical professional, um, to get further information about uh, future advances in the COVID vaccine. If you guys have any further questions, please reach out to us. Please uh, reach out to any medical professional in, in the county. We are here to um, help you out, make a appropriate decision for yourself and for your children. And if you do decide to get the vaccination, please get it earlier so our kids can go back to school safer and uh, more people getting the vaccination decreases the chance of um, the Delta virus spreading further and putting other people who may not be able to get the vaccination at risk as well. 
and uh, I hope we get out of the pandemic sooner and go back to life as we knew before.